I've just bought the biggest set of pan pastels that there is. This cost so much. So let's find out if I totally wasted my money. This is the full set of the 80 pan pastel colors. Ooh, it looks like we've got loads of these like sponges and applicators. I've used a lot of these before, but there's some here that I haven't actually tried before. These look so beautiful. Okay, there's so many. So it looks like these are all of the warmer tones. And then there's like these blues and purples and some like reddy brown tones. These colors are so pretty. These would be really good for lots of like nature, landscapes. And then there's a load of grays, a nice sort of skin tone over here. I think we've got some really nice vibrant shades, but also some more muted toned down like earthy tones. I tried out Pan Pastel for the first time a couple years ago when loads of you were like, oh my God, Kesty, you've got to check these out. They're so amazing. But when I actually went to buy them, I just remember thinking, whoa, these are so expensive. I mean, I thought a set of 76 Karen Dash color pencils were expensive, but they are nothing compared to these. I'm going to start off by swatching all 80 of these colors. Under each pan, you can actually see that there is a label which tells you the color name for each pan pastel. And I just love swatching a full set of colors and just seeing all of those vibrant different colors come out onto the paper. One thing that I noticed straight away that I really like about this art supply is their naming system for how they name their colors. So there'll be magenta tint, which is a really light pink, and then magenta, and then magenta shade, which is a darker version of the pink, and then magenta extra dark, which is like a really dark version of the pink. And here are all the swatches. I really like doing this when I first use an art supply because it's really useful for referring back to when you're trying to pick the best color for your drawing. You can just see which one looks best by looking at the swatches. Let's dive straight in and try to create a nice landscape with the pan pastels. And I'm gonna start off by doing a really beautiful pastel sky. You can get really quickly a nice soft result, which is just so useful when you're drawing something like clouds. But when I started to draw the mountains, I started to notice a lot of problems. I was trying to add these darker gray tones. And even when I was adding some of the darkest colors that there was in this set, they were still appearing quite light. I just wasn't able to get it as dark as it looked in the actual like tin. It just wasn't getting dark enough. Even when I tried to layer lots of the pastel onto the paper, I was getting the same result. It would just sort of blend the pastel away. It wouldn't get any darker. It made all of the colors look very drab, very flat and dull. I just wasn't able to make the drawing pop. And even when I was doing the lake, when I was adding loads of vibrant colors, lots of greens and blues, they weren't looking very vibrant at all. They were just sort of muddy and dull. And I was really confused because I've used Pan Pastel before. I did an eye with it when I first tried them out and I got great results and the colors looked nice. But the biggest problem that I faced came of when I tried to add detail to this drawing. Pan Pastel is really meant to just be used as an underpainting, not to create details, because you can't really create details with them, especially when you're using such big tool, like sponge tool applicators, it just won't work. So you have to go over the top with pencils to create that sort of refined look to add details. But the color pencils that I was using wasn't sticking on top of the pastel. This was really frustrating because this is how they're meant to be used. And if I can't get color pencils to stick on top of the pastels, then I can't create a finished drawing. And so this drawing just wasn't coming together. So before I carry on, with another drawing, I need to figure out some answers to these problems. It's been a few years since I've used Pan Pastel and I really actually don't know very much about them. So I'm gonna watch a few videos before I try another drawing and try and learn a bit more about how to use this art supply and also figure out where I've been going wrong and see if I can find some answers to the problems that I'm having. I'm gonna try out all of the new things that I've learned from watching those videos by drawing this cat eye. And I'm using my swatches to help pick what I think the best sort of colors will be for this. Here's all of the colors that I'll be using. One of the main things I found out from watching all of those videos 
is that I was definitely using the wrong type of paper. So the paper that I was using before was just the Strathmore Bristol Vellum. And I thought it'd be okay because it said it'd be okay for all sort of dry media, including pastels. But I can tell straight away using this that it definitely was too smooth before. I'm using the pastel matte paper. Another really important thing that I learned when watching all of those videos is that I'm not supposed to add a lot of pan pastel at this stage. Apparently it's really important that I still let some of the tooth sort of show through and I don't add a really thick layer of the pan pastel. That way the colored pencil will be able to easily stick on top when I try to add all of the details. But because I'm using this paper that has more of a tooth, I can get away with adding more pan pastel than I would of in the last drawing. They recommended actually mixing your colors on some like printer paper or basically really smooth paper. That way, not a lot of the pastel actually stays on the paper. A lot of it can get picked up and applied directly to the drawing. That way you don't waste a lot of the pastel. And I thought that was a really good tip and not something that you'd necessarily think of. In terms of price, these are really expensive. These pans of pastel, they actually last a really long time because it's just pure product in here. Sometimes I can go through a whole pencil for just one drawing, especially if I'm doing like a portrait. But if you were to use these to do the base layers for your drawings, then it might actually make it a lot cheaper because you wouldn't have to use quite so much colored pencil. I literally have been using this for about five minutes and it's already broken. It actually tore as I put it on. You can see there that it's just sort of ripped when you try and like pull it on if you're not careful. And I wasn't being super aggressive with it or anything. These are quite expensive. And if you have to go through multiple ones for each drawing, then it's just gonna cost a lot to keep replacing these. So that's something that I'm not too happy about. So I've got a nice base layer down with the pan pastel now. I've kept it a nice thin layer, I think. I really hope so. Oh, that shows up really good and that's gonna be the hardest thing to do, white on black. Oh, look how well that shows up, yay! See, this definitely wouldn't have shown up like this when using that other paper. Oh my God, it just goes on top so easily. It's gonna be so easy to add details to this drawing. I'm so glad I watched those videos. Also, the reason I'm using luminance pencils for this instead of the polychromos that I used for the last drawing is that in the videos, people were saying that these show up better on top of the on top of the pan pastels because the polychromos are quite translucent. They just won't show up as easily. And I, I know I have used these before, but it's been like two years, so I kind of forgot how they were to work with, but doing this just brings back the memories of how fun it was to use these. How much of a difference it was to just drawing with colored pencils where everything just takes forever to do. I'm just testing out the polychromos to see if they will go on top. They are having absolutely no problem with layering on top of the pan pastel. So you could use whichever color pencils you prefer. Going forward, I'll probably use the polychromos for the really sharp details and then the luminance for any colors that I need to be super opaque, like for example, the white. This set came with so many different tools and sponges to try out and I've already used a couple like these are ones that I use all the time when I use pan pastels when I've used it in the past. I've always used these and to just blend normal pastels. They're really useful for that. And they're kind of like little palette knives as if you were painting. So they're really good at laying down lots of the pastel and you can do almost like painterly sort of strokes with this tool. You can get your drawing to look very much like a painting. And they come in sort of round, we've got triangles, 
rectangle and there's also like more square ones as well in here and I think this is probably the most versatile sort of all-around tool so if you're on a budget and you just want to try one of these soft tools out then I'd recommend getting this one and maybe some of these little eyeshadow looking applicators because these are really good for adding those smaller details this set also did come with this and I hadn't seen this before until I got this set and it's that same eyeshadow applicator but it's on a longer stick so you can kind of hold it like you would a pencil and get a little bit more control with your blending when you're laying down the pastel you have a lot more control and precision with this tool over the smaller applicator it's just a little easier to hold it's just a lot nicer overall to hold this one it also came with these bigger sponges and this wedge one is good for laying down a lot more of the pastel because it's bigger but also it's got sharp edges so you can get more lines and sort of block shapes with this whereas with this one it's better for rounded application where you want something smooth so maybe skin where you don't want the skin to be super angular when you apply it and I'm not really sure what you'd use this one for. And also this set came with these large sponges. These are really big. And these would be great if you're working on a really big drawing and you just wanna get down a load of color really fast. A little spoiler, I've got a video coming up where I think I'll be using these a lot. And I'm really excited about that project. I'm gonna be drawing something pretty big. So stay tuned for that. I swear there was a bigger one. Ah, yeah. And finally, there's this one. See, straight away, you can see that this would really easily give you the sort of angled strokes. I'm using just these three primary colors. You can mix your colors together to create all sorts of different colors. And you can actually buy Pan Pastel as just a set of five. So these primary colors and also black and white. And with that, you could just mix any color that you wanted because they are super expensive. And you know, if you just wanna see if it's something that you'd actually make a lot of use out of, then this would be a great way to do that. So we've got this really big sponge. So you can just lay down so much color so fast with these bigger sponges. And if you did get this smaller set, you could just sort of mix your colors on a scrap piece of paper and then apply them to your drawing. See, it was so easy to create this purpley color. And if I wanted it to be a bit more of a blue toned purple, I could just add a bit more blue. Let's make green. If you go in a circular motion, you get a much more diffused edge. Add a bit of blue. And you can see how effortlessly the colors blend together to create a sort of gradient. These blend so nicely. This gives a much softer, rounded edge compared to these that give a much more chiseled edge. Let's do one final drawing. I wanna try out more of the colors, more of the applicator tools. So let's draw a portrait and I'm really excited to try out drawing the skin. I'm using the black pastel matte paper again and I start by using a really light pink colour pencil to create a simple sketch outline. I always find it really tricky to sketch out facial proportions, especially when the head is tilted at a really difficult angle. So now I'm diving into adding a base layer with the pan pastels and I'm trying out all of the skin tones that they've got in this set, which is really fun. I found that it was so fast and easy to add a base colour to the entire skin and now I'm going in with a few more subtle colors like some orangey browns and pink tones for the cheeks and I tried to create an eyeshadow look to her eyes with pink and orange as well. Now I did pick a trickier reference for this because she's got some flowers in front of her which are actually casting some really interesting shadows on her face. So I'm actually using some dark browns and warmer tones to sort of map out the general shapes of those shadows on her face and it is looking really weird at this stage. I'm loving using the palette knife sort of tools to add this pastel because it just feels like I'm working on a painting and sculpt 
putting her face on the paper, which I just find really nice because you're not worried about all of the details, you're just sort of like painting all of the colors in there. And very quickly, I'm just able to cover the entire drawing with pan pastel, and this is something that would have taken hours to do with just pencils. I will admit that going into this drawing, I didn't really have much of a plan. I was just sort of randomly adding colors straight onto the paper and not really thinking too much about which color I was going to put where or what the best sponge was to use for each area. And because I'm not really familiar with this medium yet and the capabilities of the medium, I wasn't really sure how to make a plan for how to tackle this drawing. And that's something that once you have a lot of practice and become a lot more familiar with the strengths and weaknesses and limitations of that medium, it's a lot easier to plan when you understand how the supply works. I added lots of details to the eyes and lips and it's just so great seeing a drawing come to life when it was just looking really weird and ugly a few minutes ago. But I ran into a problem when I started to add the shadows to her face. I noticed that the Caran d'Ache pencils were leaving a really grainy look when I was doing the shading, and that's because this paper texture is very gritty. This is a bit of a problem when you're doing realism because sometimes you really need a smooth look to your drawing, like if you're doing skin. And so if it looks grainy, it will just take away from that realism. And because of that, I didn't think that the Caran d'Ache pencils would be the best option for doing like the eyebrow hairs or the eyelashes. So instead I used the polychromos for these areas and they work so much better. I was able to get really crisp lines and it didn't really leave a grainy look at all, but they were a little bit more reflective and shiny. So that's something to keep in mind. So was this big set of pan pastels worth it? Well, I imagine they would last a really long time, they were really good quality, and also they dramatically sped up how long it took to do a drawing. But I don't think you need to get this really big set to start with. Just get a smaller set, which is a lot cheaper. If you wanna see me use this art supply for the very first time, then make sure to check out that video next. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye everybody.